what are living organisms made up of? Well, let's find out. Take a small piece of the onion bulb and peel its skin off. This happens to be the epidermal portion. A forceps may be used to carry out this process. Then, place the peel on a watch glass with water. Later, transfer it to a glass light with a drop of water in it. The peel now needs to be perfectly flat and in the center. After which, a drop or two of a stain called saffronin may be added and a cover slip gently placed on the peel without including any air bubbles. This temporary mount is now ready for observation under the microscope. What do we observe? We observe that the onion bulb is indeed made up of small subunits called the cells and that these structures are all similar to each other. Another important observation that we make is that the size of the cell is the same and does not depend on the size of the onion bulb. Which means the onion bulb that we had used could either be a very big one or a small one but the size of the cells in all of it remains the same. Children. This is the structure of the onion peel under the microscope. We get to see the cell wall, the nucleus, the cytoplasm and the vacuoles and we also see that all the cells are very tightly packed without any intercellular spaces. Let's continue children. This is a list of the discoveries, some really prominent ones related to the cell. The first one is the discovery of the cell itself by Robert Hooke after which we have the discovery of the improved version of the microscope, then the nucleus by Robert Brown, Perkin G coining the term protoplasm and then comes the cell theory. The cell theory was proposed by Schwann and Sclidon, according to which all plants and animals are composed of cells and cell is the basic unit of life, which means anything that is living is made up of cells. The cell theory was further expanded by Virchow who said that all cells arise from pre-existing cells which means there's always a mother cell which divides to form the daughter cells and then we have the discovery of the electron microscope by Noll and Ruska. Remember after the discovery of the electron microscope the cell became a whole new world to be explored. Now organisms could be classified as unicellular or multicellular organisms on the basis of number of cells that they are made up of. A unicellular organism is one in which a single cell constitutes the whole organism and performs all essential life processes like reproduction, digestion, excretion and so on. A few examples of such unicellular life forms are amoeba, paramecium, chlamydomonas, etc. Multicellular organisms are those in which a group of cells constitute the entire organism and also perform specific functions in it. So many cells group together in a single body and assume different functions in it to form various body parts. For example, a group of cells could join together to perform the function of reproduction. Another group of cells could join together to perform the function of excretion and so on. A few examples of such forms are some fungal species, plants and animals. Multicellular organisms arise from single cells. How? By the process of cell division. Cells divide to produce cells of their own.